go to the brushes panel in Affinity Photo and you can go over to the right side and you can find a whole load of options. New square brush. You think, well, square brushes, what use is that? Well, it's quite useful. New square brush just creates a very basic square brush. But you can vary it, modify it in numerous ways. Of course, you've got all the standard settings across here. You've got symmetry, you've got blend modes, you've got opacity. So you've got a lot with that square brush. You can find the brushes panel in the view menu, studio and brushes. So let's just edit that. Just select it and then you can go up here and click there or double click. So double click and it will bring up this panel. So what you now can do, you can actually work at the same time as having that. So you can just apply it. Now I've got the brush stroke as a green. You could of course make it black, green, whatever you want. But you can vary the size. You can change. The hardness doesn't seem to have any effect. You can move that back. I don't think there's any effect at all with that one. But if you change the flow, you can make it nice and blurry. So you can sort of, however, really only noticeable when you sort of add some color into the mix. And I'll do that in a sec. So keep the flow there. You can change shape. And again, that creates a slightly different shape, <laughs> squeezes it. They're very limited, but still you may want to create a nice sort of like that. And of course you can change the spacing. So you can make it nice spacing like that. So you can make a nice like pole design just as you go across there. And of course you can always rotate it. So you can rotate it so the line is going like that. So that's just from a few subtle changes to there. Again, push that up rotation high. You can change the shape back to that. Set the flow, maybe very or that. Just set it to 100%. You can see you can do a variety of different designs. However, even more useful for this, dynamics. Click there, dynamics. And you've got size jitter. So you can vary that, make it very sort of, with pressure, depends if you've got a pen, of course. Also, flow. You can make that, again, with pressure or random. Also, rotation jitter. That's why I've changed the rotation value from zero, so it can actually rotate. However, let's just change this right down the bottom. Probably the most useful, hue jitter, saturation jitter, and luminosity jitter. And then you can apply that, and you can see what happens. You create these squares that are rotating and also vary in color. As you apply it across like that. You can also, of course, reduce the size jitter or make it like that. Reduce the size, make some great noise like this. You can just apply it very and create very small squares that basically become like little noise designs. And just apply that very, very tiny. Again, just changing the size. So just increase accumulation. Now, accumulation can be used as well. So you can just lower that. So it's just faded away. Now that doesn't actually reflect what it's actually doing on the scene. However, just put it that way again. There's some features when you go and use this, when you use a square, that doesn't, they don't seem to work in the same way as the other brushes. I'm not certain why, but you've got also got down here, I'm not going to use this one, but you can if you want to, just set it up so it always works in sort of difference. So you go to difference and then you can just go over it in difference. And you can see as you do that, it will make an unusual effect, just goes over, applies it, there's difference. I'm just going to increase that so you can see it more. You can write, create some very, very abstract color designs using this approach. So what you can do, put that back to don't set the blending mode. You don't have to set the blending mode. You can always set it here. Just as easy, just go up here, set it to normal and apply it just like that. However, you've got all these dynamic settings. You can also scattering. So you can change the scattering of it. So it just spreads out, fills the whole document very quickly. Also, what you've got, you can try and try these ones again. Shape just as again, you can make it small or big, just so it's thin, etc. It fades away. Loads of different settings that you've got to create thousands of different brushes just from a square brush. However, you can also use textures. But I must admit, it doesn't seem to really do much. But you might find a little bit better with that, you've got options here, nozzle, final, etc. You may find them useful. When I've been running through it, trying out different things, I haven't found it. I might be completely wrong. So please put in the comments if you've actually found that you can create some really interesting designs with this base texture feature. However, what you can also do, this. You can add bitmap. Now I'm not gonna do that because during this run through, I actually had quite a few crashes when I click add bitmap for some weird reason. Doesn't seem to uh, like me at this point. However, add round. So click that. So you can just try out 
that feature. So you can now add a round brush. So you can see what happens. You get a nice round dot there. You can see that dot as well as the obviously the actual shape there. You can over the top or beneath, etc. You can create some very interesting designs by doing that. And you can see as you vary this, you can see the result there, those dots blending and combining with those other things. And you can change the spacing, change that, change, let's go with the flow so you can make it nice and variable. You can create a variety of different designs. However, of course, what you can also do, you've got the dynamics for this, this is for the square. But you can go to the sub brush there, you can go on there, edit this. So just click there on the sub brush and you can go down here and edit. And you can add more than one. You don't have to just use one. You can add more. So again, bitmap doesn't seem to uh, particularly like me at the moment. So just go up here, size, and you can vary this size. So you can make it very small, but you can also, you can see you've got dynamics for this as well. So you can rotation, not so useful for in that shape, but you've also got here. So you've got rotation. So you can create nice sort of elliptical shapes. And then you go dynamics there. And you've got, again, you've got rotation jitter. So you can rotate that. And size jitter. So you can create different sizes. You've also got flow. So you can make that sort of fade away. Got flow on here as well. So you can make that fade away. And you can see the result here. But you can see for this, the actual circular design there. And also you've got blend modes as well. So it's an awful lot just in a square brush. So you've got that. Unfortunately, you haven't got the, um, let's just go there, got shapes, you've got, you've got a reasonable amount. You've got here, hue jitter as well. Now, let's just try it. Now, as you apply it, you can see you get some a weird mix and combination of different designs like that. And of course, just try different sizes there, a scattering, hardness. You can see that one actually does have an effect there, hardness. Accumulation, again, perhaps useful. Flow and so on. You can see you can create a lot. General, just do that. And you virtually can wipe out the square if you want to uh, completely close there. And you can create some really weird and wonderful designs using this approach, using this brush that brings in this ellipse as well. As well as, of course, any other shape as well. Well, once you're happy with that, click close and you've got your different brush there. And you can see I've got a variety of different brushes Select that one. That again was a square brush. And you can see the result there. So you can create a lovely sort of unusual blurry one there. Or this one. Again, a nice sort of random noise brush. Or this one. Again, just a small but very intense one. Again, using that square feature. Simply just go up here and go to new square brush to create a variety of different designs that you can use and create, well, a lot with that. And of course you can use it as layers, use it with effects. So you don't have to stop there. You can just go to filters and you can apply, of course, filters, deform, my old favorite. You can go and add some pins and just distort the design and warp and create all kinds of unique designs very quick and easy from those squares. Hope you found this of interest. Thank you much.